Welcome back to Blizzard Abroad. Today, I want to talk about a very serious subject. The attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump this past weekend. More importantly, I, I want to address the reaction, reaction from people and what that says about us as Americans. So just to make sure I stay on topic, I do have um, some notes here because uh, I, I, I really want to stay on topic with this one. Um, so if you see me looking over, that's because I'm, I'm trying to stay on point, my bullet points. Um, so first, I want to emphasize that this is a tragedy. It's a tragedy for all Americans, no matter what side of the aisle you sit on, no matter who you vote for. You know, we have to remember that we're all Americans. You know, we all have something at stake. Um, more than that, you know, people lost their lives. You know, the shooter, obviously. And then the innocent man who was in attendance, a firefighter, a true hero. You know, folks. For the people, you know, online that are making light of this, for the people who are saying that, you know, they wish that this attempt was successful, that's disgusting. For the people who are saying that, you know, that this was a, a false flag or the video was AI generated, even though, you know, it was broadcast live on TV, you know, there were children in that audience. This was a senseless act of violence. People lost their lives because of a senseless act of violence. Just like people every day in America, innocent people lose their lives because of senseless acts of violence. It's, it's sad. It's sad to see the reactions. How people can't get over this divide that we have in America. You know, um, the, the political divide, the political climate in America is a shame. You know, and it's a national disgrace the way we act towards each other. It's an embarrassment the way we treat our fellow Americans just because they don't believe or think the same way that we do. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. There used to be a time in history when a national tragedy would actually bring Americans together. It would bring us closer. We would realize that we had more in common, you know, than what separates us. And I don't think that time is definitely not now. And I don't see it coming back if we keep going down this road that we're going down. You know, I predict that, you know, Politicians, you know, they're going to let this cool down. But sooner or later, and I guarantee it, you know, they're going to figure out a way to use this for political gain. You know? And us, any of us, are going to allow them to do it. Instead of standing up and saying, we've had enough, we're tired of, of people you know, pushing, forcing this political, this divisiveness overall down our throats. But we allow them to do this to us. And I'm asking you guys, I'm asking, even for myself, how much more can we take as a people 
before we break. Maybe we're already past that breaking point. We suffer from PTSD here in America. I'm absolutely sure of it. There's no way that we can, that we can deal with the constant barrage of negativity. The constant barrage of divisiveness every single day to the point to where we can see major tragedies happening every day and we just go about our lives. You know, there are people trying to get through to, to, to regular Americans and tell them that something is wrong here. This is not natural. This is not how regular people should act or react to tragedies. But every time we bring it up, every time we bring up uh, mass, mass shootings, the drug epidemic, um, the economy, anything serious, anything serious, the crime, you know, we get told to shut up. We get told to shut up or we get clicked off so quick that, you know, it, it, it's the same. You know, I, I just don't know how much more the American people could take. You know, and, and this is being seen around the globe. Had that been a successful attempt, America would be on fire right now. And I'm pretty sure that somehow that fire would spread around the globe. So I'm grateful that that attempt was not successful. And I'm hoping that we can make it through this election cycle without anything else happening. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm not, not too optimistic. Because I know that people are reaching their breaking point. People have no patience for each other. You no, know, but every single day, even now, even after this tragedy, you know, people are still stoking the fire. And I'm not... We can't sit here and blame it. Oh, Russian bots. Oh, like it, that's BS. I'm around regular Americans every day. I hear the way they talk. I see the way they act. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Just. We all have a, a role to play. It's up to us as the American people to stand up and say that we do not want to go down this road any further. It's up to us to hold up the republic, a democracy. It's up to the people. I don't care who you want to win. I don't care. If you think that, you know, one man can save our republic or that one man can put an end to our republic if you really believe that if that's possible we have a weak ass republic we have a weak ass democracy and if we have a weak ass democracy or republic a weak ass republic it's because we have a weak people we, the American people, are weak. We're being led around by our nose. We're being told how to act, told how to think, told how to vote. When are we going to start thinking independently? Stop letting people, you know, weaponize our emotions for political gain. You know, for monetary gain. Start thinking independently. We're all independent. We're all responsible for our own lot in life. But 
But yet and still, we're, we're told the way to act when we follow right along. Most of us, you know, have our head buried so far in the ground, we don't know what's going on. Some of us don't even care to know. It's, it's a shame. When you step back and you look at it, we, we can't even, we're scared to even discuss politics with our family, with our friends, with our coworkers. We're, they have us so scared. And we're supposed to be the freest country on the planet. We're scared to talk about politics with each other. We're scared to talk about religion with each other. Those are supposed to be supposedly the two most important influence influences on this planet. We're scared to talk about it. Why? Why? I, I want to talk about politics. I want to talk about religion with people. I, it's like me. It's like <laughs> when my job tells me I get a raise or something, it, you know, I don't know if any of you can relate to this. Your job tells you, you know, after you get a raise, hey, don't, hey, just keep it to yourself. Man, I go right out there. I don't care. I let, I'm, I'm telling people what I make because I'm not going to let, you know, anybody use me as a pawn against somebody else. I'm not going to let it happen. And you can ask any, I wish you guys. If anybody's watching this that knows me or worked with me before, they know I'm telling the truth. I will, I will tell everybody around, hey, I just got raised. This is how much they put me up to. You better go ask for yours too, buddy. You know, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm not going to be used as a pawn. You know, see the next point I have up here, you know. So like I said, it's on all of us. It's on all of us to protect to protect the republic, you know, not just one man. The president, you know, as much power he has, um, he's given that power by the American people. He's just a man. You know, we empower our government. But the problem is, is that, you know, we don't participate. So I got some, some, some stats right here. 66% of eligible voters voted in the 2020 presidential election. On average, 27% of eligible voters vote in local elections. Even less for school boards and special elections. So one third of eligible voters did not vote in the last presidential election. One out of three. So that means I could tell one out of three people who are running around complaining constantly to shut the F up. You have no right to complain. You didn't put in on this. And it's even worse for local elections. One out of one out of four. No, I'm sorry. Three out of four did not vote in local elections. That's sad. That's horrible. And you wonder why. Things are the way they are. You wonder why all that marching you're doing, they don't take you serious. Because they know that you're not going to march to that ballot box. All the complaining for nothing. You're not going to do anything. You didn't put in on this. So shut the F up. If we voted, as much as we complained, as much as we talked crap, we would see the changes that we advocate for. But y'all won't go vote. But you'll get online 
all these conspiracy theories. They don't need a conspiracy theory. They don't need to do half of the stuff that y'all um, accuse them of doing because y'all don't show up. We have nobody to blame but ourselves. And I'm not going to sit up here and on the get out the vote campaign or anything like that, you know. But I do vote. And, I, and I'm an independent. I vote for who I want. I voted Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. My vote doesn't matter. It's my choice. So please stop arguing. Just vote for who you're going to vote for. You don't need to change anybody else's mind. So all the arguing back and forth is, is, is useless. You're not going to change anybody's mind. Most people already have their mind up. And as you can see, you know, a third, a third of the people that, that you're arguing with um, about the presidential election, they're not going to vote anyway. That's just that's just the truth. So now, for now, I'm not arguing with any of you guys, man. I'm not arguing about politics. I will discuss politics with anybody that wants to, but arguing and going back and forth, you know, especially I no, I know one third of you ain't, aren't gonna vote anyway. So what's the use? What's the use to arguing? Let's stop arguing. You know, just go vote. You vote for who you want. Let me vote for who I want. But as long as we vote, please get out and vote, man. So I just want to stress too that, you know, political violence should never be accepted. It should never be promoted by, by anybody. We're not North Korea. We're not Russia. We're not China. No, but we're losing our influence around the world little by little. Believe me, I'm I'm a critic of America, certain ways about America. I'm a critic. But we need critics. We need somebody coming up here saying a third of y'all ain't fucking voting, so stop complaining. Only 27% of y'all Vote in local elections, so stop complaining if you're not going to vote. You need somebody to tell you that. Because all the rest of it is BS. It doesn't matter, all the complaining. If you're not going to put the work in, if you're not going to put any work in, stop complaining. Just give them your tax dollars. Let them do whatever they want to do. So political violence is, is, is not anything that to, to be made light of. It's not. When, when that becomes acceptable, we become a whole different country. Everything changes. Everything changes. But I, I honestly really want to know what you guys think. Please let me know. If I'm wrong on this one, let me know. We can have a... a, a, a you know, a peaceful dialogue without throwing insults around, without calling each other names. That's what we need to do. We should be able to discuss these issues. How else are we going to understand where each other are coming from if we can't have a simple discussion? We can't talk about it. Everybody just stays on their own side. At least see where each other are coming from, please. Like, this is ridiculous. This is scary. Nobody wants to be real about it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, please. Um, like, share, and subscribe, but please drop a comment. Let me know your opinion on this. Whether, whether you agree, whether you disagree. Right? We need to just start having civil discussions. Till next time, this is Blizzard of Prop.